Hola, mon ami. I'm Giselle Lien, founder of GigWorks.com, a platform that gets gigs for artists. And today we're speaking to an amazing soul singer, Zoe Theodoro. Now, Zoe, I met you in Berlin at Edelweiss, um, a club at Edelweiss. And it closed a few years ago. And I found that you're singing to be so powerful. Like I really felt your presence oh. and I knew I had to meet you at that time. So tell us like who you are and how did you get to Berlin? Okay. Well, my name is Zoe Theodoru. I'm a Scorpio and I like walks on the beach. And um, I like dudes that, no, I'm just kidding. But I am Zoe Theodoru. I do like walks on the beach. <laughs> My life is kind of unusual because I went from Florida to Canada to Berlin and then elsewhere. And I ended up in Berlin because a bandmate of mine went to visit with his friend, another bandmate. So it was a bass and a drummer. So the two, two the rhythm. And what they, they came back and they said, you have to come here. We want to move here. I mean, it's a great place. And I remember the first time I went, I thought, yeah, this is a great city, really vibey. And um, they love music. Everybody is an art, like art is important there and it's celebrated. And that's um, something that I really loved about Berlin. So that's how I kind of got there through friends. And then I met you at Edelweiss, which is, was a wonderful, uh, place in Kreuzberg, I believe. Yes. Um, I I found found, yes, yes. Um, for me, when I came to Berlin, I found that the, the, there's an undertone of, of a vibe here. And if, you, if, if you're trying to look for it, you probably can't find it. But if it, it hits, you. exactly. <laughs> and if you know what it is, uh, you can understand it and you feel it. And there's something there in Berlin. Um, but let's go back to your performance because what I, re I, I re remember, and I have the, the, the video of that, by the way. Um, <laughs> you you right, remind me of a mixture of Ella Fitzgerald, um, a little bit of Aretha, Shaka Khan, and Whitney. Um, mm. Did any of them, were they any of them your inspiration? Of course. So uh, what's funny is I discovered jazz later in life. So before I came a, became a professional singer, I did this um, kind of jazz weekend through a friend at a church. And I thought it's no big deal. <clears throat> and the woman there, and I knew I could sing. I've always sang in school and stuff, but <clears throat> never as a professional. And she said to me, what, you should be doing this full time. So Oddly enough, that started and I had not really listened to, you know, Ella and all of those as much as I did in my youth. And when I was young, I listened to Whitney and Aretha because those were the people on the radio. And Whitney! And, Whitney. Oh, and I saw her live, by the way. And oh, I'm so jealous. I've seen Michael Jackson live. I saw, saw Whitney Houston. I've saw Prince four times. Wow. Luther Vandross. Yeah. Those so, were the um, days, right? The 80s. The, uh, the, I love the, the 80s. 80s, the late 80s and the 90s. Mm -hmm. So I saw these guys all in the 90s, but it was like, and of course, Michael Jackson, I was very young when I saw him, but oh my God, I, my life was changed forever. Cause that was thriller. Super young. So like, anyway, that like, was, in this time thriller. frame, right. Yeah. In, like, in this time frame, do, do we even find these type of artists anymore? I don't think we, we find that kind of caliber of like mega superstar well, you know what these I, days. I've read this somewhere, Giselle, and this is what I, it's funny you talk about that because one of the things that I've read, and I think we can see it, you can see it, I think people feel it. Things like classic, you know, when you say, oh, that music, you could tell that song is a classic. That doesn't feel like it's as much as it used to be. Maybe it's because in our music industry today, things turn over so quickly. Whereas back in the day, you, you, you could let something marinate, you know, like right. a good stew, you know, whereas now it's kind of next, 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 next. So I think that's what we're, we're missing, mm -hmm. but yeah, yeah, you're right. Like, yeah. <laughs> so you, um, 
ha had a debut album called Essence of Life, um, and it generated a song that won a Canadian Gospel Music Award for Best yeah. Jazz Vocal. How it like? Did. How did that happen? Well, uh, I, I mean, I was doing my my album here. I had some friends that were connected, and then they said, "You listen, you're a you're a Canadian artist." this uh, Canadian Gospel Music Awards is, you know, we're getting it started here in Canada. Would you be willing to submit your song? And I, and uh, what's funny is my song is technically, well, I hate labels, but I'm gonna say it would be more of a jazz song, but the message was inspirational. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually the message was, the song was called, I Believed It. Mm -hmm. And it was about my, uh, I was married in a former life, I don't, remember it no <laughs> but but one of the things that I struggled with as a young woman and insecurities were a big deal you know as we all go through the whole body image thing and unfortunately I think my ex-husband was instead of healing that which is not saying your partner should heal you but it wasn't a it, it, he didn't help so I believed all of the bad things that he said. So hence the song name, I believed it when you told me this and I believed it when you told me that and I believed it when you told me you cared, I believed in you, but now I understand I, I need to believe in me, not you. So that was kind of the message of the song. So, yeah. That's, that's such a great message. I think that a lot of um, new performers and especially teenagers these days, they they really need that um, um, emotional support that mm -hmm. they need to believe in themselves, believe mm -hmm. in their talent and that they can do it. Um, and that's where, that's re one of the reasons why I created Kickworks is because to, yeah. to fulfill that void and that support system for artists these days, um, especially with, you know, um, the past administration cutting out a lot of funding for arts and entertainment and, you know, um, creative um, learning it's so important in the education system to have that type of creativity in what we do. You know, um, everything that we wear, everything, you know, our image, um, everything is creative. It, it has to be done. Someone has to take the time and the work to put everything together, you know, it has to be designed. But you know what, here's the deal with creatives. Everybody's the creative. So right. here's, what, here's what happens when you don't support arts or artists. The, the way artists do their job and the way they approach things with somewhat of an open mind is something that can be gleaned for corporate, for anywhere, for life, you know, like artists understand what it is to be rejected. You, you know, in life, that's going to happen. I'm not saying it's going to happen. I'm not trying to be negative, but artists are able to deal with things creatively. Now they are sensitive too. So sometimes that might hinder them, but I think that we're we're missing the boat if we're not allowing that spirit to be prevalent across everywhere, not only just for artists, but for mm -hmm. everyone. Everyone needs it because especially now with what's going on, oh my gosh, what I loved seeing is so many people that I wouldn't classify as artists come out and do funky videos or funny things. And you're like, we all, we all have that. That makes us human. Right. And um backtrack you know to, uh, piggybacking on what you're saying there are so many social media platforms that allow artists to um thrive and be vibrant in their element um with not having to have a huge budget you know right um you know platforms such as youtube and tiktok and instagram and facebook you know you're able to do all this creative work without having to spend a lot of money on it for right. production. So um, I think it's a great avenue for, for uh, the creativity to kind of flow. Now you touched upon a topic um, that I kind of feel a lot of uh, our audience need to kind of understand. Um, you spoke about rejection and, uh, oh, trust me, as a, a business owner, uh, you know, when we're oh, pitching, girl. when we're pitching to investors, we get a lot of, of rejections. Um, so as an artist, how do you handle the, the rejection by a label, by a producer, by a venue who are, are, aren't looking for your type of, you know, um, music or for someone else who's not looking, you know, uh, 
doesn't match or mesh with the, yeah. the venue or the producer's taste. Well, you know, it's funny. I mean, talk about re rejection your whole life. I mean, that's a, that's a big deal even. I don't know if you know this about me. I'm actually adopted. Did you know that about me? You did? I didn't know that. Oh my God. Oh, no. Okay. So I'm adopted. I know. So <laughs> I was 10 days old when I'm adopted. So when people say, do you handle rejection? I think to myself, well, initially my life began with it. Mm -hmm. So if you think about it, it's always been a part of my life. Now, as you get older, you understand that uh, not everyone is everybody's taste and that's okay. As long as you understand your own value, you can handle them not wanting you because you don't sing country or you don't sing jazz or you don't sing rock or you don't whatever it is that you're not doing because that's okay there what i think people need to understand is that's they're not rejecting you they're just they're looking for something else right right it's kind of like dating you know like um for I everyone remember, i think i remember dating but yes <laughs> <laughs> um, we'll get into dating shortly but it's kind of, it, it kind of reminds me of the concept of dating. Like some people ask, well, why don't you like me? It's not that I don't like you. It's just, you're not my you're type. You're not for or, me. Yeah, you're not for me. You may be for someone else. We can still be friends, but you're just not for me, you know? Right. And I think, um, I think if, if we can all understand that concept and what you just said, you're not for me, that kind of, if people understood that and, and took that to heart, I think they can handle rejection a little bit better um yeah. and and it's a great topic and we'll delve we'll dive more into it a little bit later um so i want to come back to your singing because i felt um you have a certain style that kind of um really pulls an audience in did you always knew, know that you could sing well when i was a kid uh, my mom okay so i grew up in a greek home so my mom uh, wanted to be a singer in Greece when she was young. And of course, no, you can't do that. Right. So I think in my household, she would encourage me to sing. And sometimes I remember she would say to me, if I sing this note, you sing the harmony. She called it melody because she was Gringlish. So she's like, okay, so you sing it. I sing these notes and you make it a melody, honey. Okay. You make it a higher, the lower, whatever. And I'm like, oh, I understood so her. Cute. Yeah. <laughs> My mom needs a whole, well, God bless her, but she needs a whole show of her own. But uh, anyway, yeah, so um, that's how kind of I learned. And what's fascinating is I grew up in the States in the South. So I had a lot of soul and all that, you know, mm -hmm. American type music. But I also had Greek music, which is different time signatures, different vibes. So I, I had, and then my mom was like, I love the Frank Sinatra and the Inkel Barhamperdings, whatever, you know, so I have that too. So it's a whole lot going on. Yeah. So you mentioned Gringlish. So you're half, you're Greek, but you're Greek. also American as mm -hmm. well. But you I'm live Canadian. in Canada. But I'm Canadian too now. You're Cana Canadian, exactly. So uh, you, wh when I first met you, um, so you were in Berlin, you were heading over to Sri Lanka or I think it was China. China. Yeah, you were heading to China and then you got a gig in Sri Lanka. Yeah. You, had, you did so much traveling. Um, mm. Tell us, like, of course, during COVID, like what, what had happened, what had transpired? How, what, how did things go for you at that time? From COVID, you mean? From COVID. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, so uh, Chinese New Year's is, I think was January 24th fourth or fifth or somewhere around there right a lot. yeah it's between I, I, somewhere like mid-January to early February I always forget myself yeah, <laughs> yeah and, and, I, and so they were they, you know what ends up happening is if you're like a band or something in China and you're doing a contract generally when you have that Chinese New Year's period they let everybody take a break because everybody in the country it seems leaves <laughs> chinese new year's everyone's out everyone's traveling it's like the mass vacation of the country so i i remember right before leaving i was in guangzhou right before leaving there the last you know you were hearing stuff on cnn or whatever mm -hmm. on the news about this you know covid or whatever 
And you're like, okay, okay. And the thing is in China, people wear masks anyway. So it's not a big right. deal. Right, there's no resistance to it. <sighs> okay, don't even get me started on that. Oh, we're, yeah. not, we're not going there, okay? <laughs> not to, that's another story for another day. That's a whole, <laughs> yeah. But so like there was no, you know, it, um, uh, so I was, but then at the end of my run there, like at the last week, the staff I was seeing, cause the staff never really wore just people outdoors, but then all the staff was wearing masks. And I was like, this is weird. I didn't know. And then when we left, we had to wear masks leaving. And then we went to the airport. And then I tell you that day, all of that changed. Like it, it all got so you already felt it. You already felt the, the impact felt, of COVID. I felt it then. And, I was and you were in China. I was in China, believe oh, me. Oh, lordy, lord. So when I was on the, <laughs> I'm on the plane and I have, I have my little, I'm like <clears throat> on the seat, on the, on the tray table uh -huh. everywhere. Or and spray, they, spraying people, if they're coughing, sneezing, just spray their face or something. Well, they booked us. Uh, every seat was a seat, a middle seat and then a seat. So nobody sat next to each other on the plane. Right, the plane right. was all spaced out. Mm -hmm. Everyone wore their mask the whole time except to eat. It was really weird. Um, and then when I got to Berlin, it felt less so. Mm -hmm. and, then I, and then my friend said, he's a billionaire. He says, darling, come to, come to Singapore and visit with me until your contract comes back. So I'm like, <laughs> done. Yeah. So I went to Singapore and they were masky, but not so, mm -hmm. but anyway, I had a great time there. And then, and then when I heard, uh, our prime, our prime minister here, uh, Trudeau, he said on TV, he's like Canadians come home. And I had never in my life heard a world leader say it, say that mm -hmm. to me, I thought, oh, holy sh, can I say shit? Well, I don't know. It's PG-13. Who, who knows? Okay. <laughs> I, said, um, I said, I got, I, I got to get out. I got to go because it's one thing to say, oh, whatever. But when you hear a world leader call his country back, it's mm -hmm. like, you know, there's something serious happening. Yeah. And that's when I said mm -hmm. I should get back to Canada. So. <laughs> So you did all the traveling and this happened during COVID, but before COVID, there was something serious that happened to you. You were in the midst, like you were, for lack of a better word, on top and in the terrorist attack. Tell yeah. us what, what, oh my God. I, when I heard it, when you called me up on, you know, about, and told me about Sri Lanka, I was like, what is this all about? Tell us the story. <laughs> So I, um, we had, I, had, I had done China contracts and I got a contract for 2019 for um, Sri Lanka. So, and it was uh, with some other different musicians, which was great, a different type of format, more of an electro swing vibe and a D like, um, anyway, it was very cool. And uh, our hotel was the Shangri-La, gorgeous hotel. And we were doing, you know, it was successful, everything was wonderful. And at that year, Sri Lanka had been voted like best, you know, lonely planet, best destination, blah, blah, blah. And they had come off a, a war, you know, 30 years of war and they had 10 mm -hmm. years of peace. And uh, uh, on the morning of Easter Sunday in 2019, I'm, Sunday's my day off, uh, most people have, you know, the, you work six days a week on a contract and you have one day off. So I thought, oh, Sunday, should I go downstairs now for the morning? Cause I woke up really early and I said, nah, I'm going to go later. So I, I, and I said, they'll have Sunday brunch and I'll just fill my boots because it'll be like all this amazing food. So I'm on the phone with my friend. And then I says, I, okay, blah, blah, blah. Gotta go. I go to make some coffee in my room and I felt boom like this. Now my room has the blackout curtains and I thought, ah, geez, like that thunder, there's some kind of monsoon. Cause that's the first thing I think of. It's a monsoon because the, they have those, that weather there. Mm -hmm. So then a few minutes later, again, I felt it. And I'm like, nah, that's not a monsoon. There's some, some shit stuff. And then I, I said, holy crap. What if they're cooking in the kitchen 
and some explode. Exploded. That's right. what I thought. Because you know, you're not. But how high were you? How high were you staying? I was so the so there's my floor. There's uh, the gym mm-hmm. floor and the bomb floor. So I was one floor between me and the bomb. Oh my god. <laughs> girl it was crazy so, so did this wait wait quick question did the structure so the structure was well built and it it maintained it didn't collapse no it didn't collapse because some i thank mean god. That, that's a thank god so like so that that all happened and then i'm like and then i start thinking something's wrong this is wrong and i and i remember t- whatsapping my uh, bandmates saying hey guys i don't know what's going on it felt like a bomb I mean, I didn't realize that that was the truth, but I said it like that. I said, are you guys feel it? Are you okay? Then I open my blackout curtains and my wind, my balcony faces the entrance of the, the service entrance. So like the garage and all of that. And as I opened it, I saw staff running, running all the white, you know, with their white to chefy kind of right. running, out, running out. I'm like, what the hell is going on and smoke and stuff. And I'm like, oh my God. So I thought I have to get dressed and get the hell out of here and get my bandmates. Let's get yeah, up. Let's go. go, get, get going, <laughs> run out of the building. Where y'all are at, or if you're sleeping, get up. So being Jump me. out the window. <laughs> of course. And the two things I take, of course, earrings, red lipstick, mm-hmm. and my phone. <laughs> running out i ran down the uh, the um stairs because you're not going to use the elevator now no. though by the way nobody nobody knew what it was i mean i didn't know but i thought it was some kind of a fire so mm-hmm. i says i'm not going to take the stairs i'll take the elevator i mean i'm not going to take the elevator i'll take the stairs i go down the stairs once i start getting closer to where mm-hmm. i'm supposed to get out i see blood everywhere i see Oof. hand marks Oof. across with blood you know on the walls and stuff. And I see drops on the floor and shit. And I'm just like, I don't know. And then as I go down, there's more and I see the, and I'm like, ah, so I go back up to my room and I'm like, just crying. And I speak out to nobody, to God, to whoever I'm like, I'm really scared. And I don't know what to do right now. <laughs> I just had to let it out. Mm-hmm. And then literally this little dude, some housekeeping dude comes from the hallway and he's like, miss, miss, come with me, come with me. And I'm like, okay. So I come with him and we go down the stairs. And as we're getting down to the bloody part, I'm like, no. And he's like, no, miss, we got to do this. Come with me. We got it. So we went down to the door where you open it. And there was stuff there. and Gory stuff. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it he sounds like a movie set almost, I, but it, this is real life, you know? It's real. Girl, oh my. And funny was he opens the door and the minute he opened that door it was like i a room of mayhem like people are running mm-hmm. there's it's smoky fumes I, yeah you, you see the hotel manager he's got like the the bullhorn and he's like everyone blah 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 zoe out get out zoe get out get out and, I'm, and i have to walk over someone who i'm not sure if they were alive or dead but i had but they I had to step over. I'm in flip flops. I mean, people came out in robes. It was 8 a.m. in the morning. It's not like it was a, it wasn't, it was early. Oh, it's so I came such out a scary that. tragedy. Uh, yeah. And we, you know, and then I see our, our, the chef, I mean, he comes out and he, he was trying to be chill and he's, you know, he's like, hi guys, can I, somebody have a cigarette, you know, a cigarette, you know, and I'm thinking, oh my God, people are all losing. Like it was just, crazy but then when you look at him and he's asking you for a cigarette his whole white was not white it was all blood oh so again you and he 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 missed getting blown up by he was standing behind a column and happened to be there and the second bomb he said he was pulling bodies to help bodies but he would pull half of one so it was a weird time it was very very bizarre and like for me, I, a friend of mine asked me the other day, like, do you still feel stuff? And I'm like, well, if I see a backpack alone somewhere, like if I'm walking, that gives, I mean, I'm not going to run screaming, but I, I feel something like, huh, 
So like yeah. a PTSD kind of moment. A little, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. the imagery of it kind of triggers something in your mind that causes sure. you to link back to the event. Well, that's how they that's how they blew it up, right? There was mm -hmm. two people that checked in the night before, and one mm -hmm. of them stood by the one end of the restaurant, and then the other dude stood by the entrance where the elevators were. So the first person blew himself up because they blew, mm -hmm. they were like they blew right. himself up. So the first person blew himself up in the one part of the restaurant, and then all the people started running. And when they ran to the door to leave, the other guy blew himself up. So, Oish. and at that time they had, this is, I'll tell you how weird this is, Giselle. So at that time there was, I don't know how many explosions in the city and their point was to, to cripple the response. So they had blown up a church Easter Sunday. There was 300 people that were affected in that church, a couple of hotels, uh, and they did it all at the same time. They had it all rigged. Now, mm -hmm. what's funny is two friends of mine from Canada had visited me the week before because that was a holiday week in Sri Lanka and we weren't working. Mm -hmm. So we did a little trip. It was wonderful. And when they left, they left on Thursday. Now this bombing happened Sunday. So they left on Thursday. What They were leaving Thursday really late. So I said, let's go to our pool and have a last swim before you get ready to go to the airport. We're swimming in the pool and I notice, and the security came out too, this drone. And, and it was funny because he was hovering over. And now I know that drone was hovering over the areas that got bombed. But back then, but before the bombing, how could I have known that that was yeah. that? In it could have been head, a production company filming, you know, for the hotel kid, or something. Whatever. You just don't know. You just didn't know. I did tell them, but they had seen the drone too. And as it's funnily enough, what the, they were they found drones like that one, I think was part of the- It bomber. was coordinated that way yeah. to kind of, yeah. oof. Yeah, and, and I remember seeing the drone and me being Zoe, I'm in the pool like, woo! <laughs> Girl, but you're a ball of sunshine. So <laughs> I think kind of like fades you. Because like every single time I meet you, you have all this laughter and positive energy <laughs> about you. So, you know, I mean. and and if if you can, you know, get through that and, and move on with life, I think you can get on with anything. And I think... You know, that's why I think your, your career should take off just, just from you, that. Mama. Part. Thank <laughs> you. Mama. Well, my name means life. That is what Zoe means in Greek. And mm -hmm. so I try and em embrace it. So sure. So now that we got some of the heavy stuff out of the way, yeah. I heard through the great line that you were on a reality show. <laughs> yes. I have I never been on a reality show. I'm not sure if I can do a reality show. I, I, I'm not sure if I could ever be myself on a reality show, you know, because you know you're on TV. So tell well, us. Well, what was funny was somebody once uh, said to me, because it's Canadian reality shows, I think are a little less. I mean, I think an American reality show is a little more like in your face. Can, mm -hmm. Canadians tend to be a little chill. And this reality show was not like on a major network or anything. So it was a weight loss. So it was um, five people from Calgary, this is the west part of Canada, and five people from the east part, Nova Scotia. And uh, we all had different journeys and stuff. And it was, it was weird. I'll tell you, I'll tell you a weird part was, so sometimes they call you because it's not, it's not us living in a house or anything. It's not like Big Brother where they're all on you. So you do your day, you do your life, and they just come and film you at certain times, right? So one of the times they had called me, the production said, okay, we're going to come film, film you this week for blah, blah. And I said, oh, okay. But at that time, I said, I can't make it uh, between this this time. And, they're, and I said, because I'm getting a, a wax Brazilian. And they're like, excellent. We will come film it. <laughs> um, um, we'll join you in the wax room. Girl. while you're doing your Brazilian you ain't got no um, idea but uh <laughs> let's keep it real uh, yeah they, no mm -hmm. they, they, they did no they did really no, they, I mean like, <laughs> I wouldn't want them to visit you thought I was kidding uh, you thought I was kidding girl no 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 no, no. okay <laughs> so, uh, so, like they they did it really you can film the door when I'm screaming 
they, oh, <laughs> it was so funny. And I'll tell you what the the sound guy, mm -hmm. I think big, we called him Iggy, but the sound guy was like a very hairy gentleman. Mm -hmm. So I remember saying to him and saying to my uh, the, the the my wax lady, I'm like him. She's like, oh yeah, yeah, we can do, we can do you, and we can do your your little tally whacker. We'll just swing it to one side and wax one side of the balls and <laughs> swing it to the other and wax the other side. And he's like, uh, no. <laughs> you know what? Um, like, I, we're, this is not a topic that we had wanted to talk about, but I feel like men are so squeamish about these small little pains. And I feel like women can actually take pain mm. better like physical pain, like men are kind of like squeamish, like you, you, you pull a hair and they're like, eh, you know, they're very, right? so. <laughs> how could they would never, I don't know how they tweeze their, they, yeah, no one could tweeze, none of them can tweeze their eyebrows, no, but yeah, so they came, they came in the room, they set it up, <laughs> they, they got me from the side, so you didn't see, you know, who has, but uh, what they, what I found funny was when, so she, so the wax lady be like, oh, Zoe's one of my favorite clients and blah, 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 blah. And she's talking. And then she's like, it's just so, and every time she do the wax, I'm telling you, I think they added a sound of- Sound effect <gasps> on there. Yeah. So when, <laughs> when, when, she, when she'd wax it, she'd be like, da, da, da. <laughs> and I'm like <laughs> so uh, yeah, that was my thing. So uh, we, we had, uh, we had that. Um, they filmed my mom, but that was funny. So they, I went to Florida and they found a person in Florida to tape me on a couple of episodes while I was in Florida, which was funny. And they taped my mom and my mom being the Greek, um, one of the questions was talk to me about Zoe's food because this is, show is about food, right? And, and weight loss. And she's like, oh, but I, and, okay. And here's the funny part. Every time my mother spoke, they put subtitles and cheesy Greek music in the background. <laughs> I, I find that that, I mean, that's funny. That's funny. It is and, always so hilarious. And she's like, you know, the joy, she loves the, to eat the good food, she loves the steaks, and she loves the macaronis. And she, you know what? In many countries, this is the truth. The people, they eat the snakes. Can you believe this? It's a, what do you call them? I'm, I'm the delicatessen. I'm like, it's not a delicatessen, mom. It's a delicatessen. Delicacy. And she's like, oh, oh, whatever, whatever. And of course the, the subtitles are going and the Greek music and it's just hilarious. But my mom was literally a trip. So yeah, that was funny. Your mom is so funny. Now oh, yeah. you have all these voices. Is there like a vocal exercise you do when you prepare for, for music? Well, when I do uh, music, well, you want to do one with me? I, I could. I'm terrible at singing. I, I don't have a good voice because I, I was watching on TV once and Celine would, would do a vocal exercise right on television and I saw how, how she do it, but um, it was kind of cute. Okay, I'll, I'll try it. I'm not sure if I'm any good at it, but okay. I'm going to say, I'm going to give you a tip and this is a tip even for singers too. Just like with everything, when you're doing your vocalizing, which means you're warming up, warming your up. Mm -hmm. you're, you're doing that. When you're doing that, you're not supposed to be singing. In other words, I, I shouldn't sound like, oh, I mean, like really nice. Mm -hmm. I should, I, cause I'm trying to work bleep out. Right. <laughs> so I should, so I, I, you know, so it's not, you're not going to, you're not trying to sound good. Cause if you're right. trying to sound good, you're singing and that's, counterproductive you're forcing yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. you're, it's too forceful like I play tennis and we also do a warm-up you know ground strokes volley serves before we there actually go. jump into it right mm -hmm. right so mm -hmm. uh okay uh I don't even know like your let's see can you can you sing this e I don't oh know. Okay. I can't. I just lost a tune there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How about we try? I'm going to try an easy one. We, 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 Yeah. We, 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 we,
And that kind of kind of extends your your uh, and, and warms it up so that when you do want to hit those big powerful notes that I know you can do, you're not straining on your voice. No. Mm -hmm. The reason you do that is to um, there's something, and I don't know how you explain it. There's something there's there's like a chest voice where you're like, mm -hmm. ah, and then there's like a head voice, ah, which is really high. And then there's like ah, whistle voice. So mm -hmm. like Mariah. So you, it's about blending those three and those exercises help you blend. Like with makeup, you don't want the line. Although oh, I've seen that lately. I Have know. you seen this? Mm -hmm. this new thing where people just draw a line on their crease? Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like a line. I, I I think that now um the, the the I I don't remember I can't keep up with the trends anymore. But mm -hmm. um like they do like the, the eyebrow like the eyebrow is the thing the thing. Yeah, but I don't like what do. they're doing. There's a so, fake looking eyebrow that they do. I mean, they had the whole like you know uh, they had a lot of YouTube videos where you you put on a lot of heavy makeup and you you literally just blend everything. For me, that's, it, it's kind of not my thing because I, I, I don't, I, I feel that that's too much makeup. And, and yeah. so, you know, I, we can go on talking about music all for another, that's another episode, girl. But, I want to ask you a question, by the way, since we're on makeup and yes, we'll change the subject. Eyelashes. These MFs, because I can't say bleep, bleep, um, are just, how do, what's, what's your take on eyelashes? So I, I've, I've tried the, the permanent, which I love, but when you're active, they come out and that's a problem. Do you have the magnet? Are those any good? Have you? I have never used the, those, oh, okay. but I do know there are some few, uh, a few tricks when I, when I learn from um, putting on um, eyelashes, you have to kind of bend them first to kind of uh, break yeah. open all of them. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, when you uh, put on the glue, you, you, tape it on your hand first and, and wave, and then you apply because okay. you don't want it too, too sticky so that you can move and, and adjust. Um, right. So those are a few tricks that I learned in makeup school. I don't generally put on lashes. My, one of my friends and your fellow singer colleague, Jolie, which we'll invite on a, another yes. interview, yeah. um, she does a lot of lashes. So we'll bring her on and she'll, she'll do a quick tip on lashes or we'll bring up a, a professional makeup artist. Cool, cool, um, cool. So moving on, um, yes. back to singing. Now, if you were ever to do a duet with someone, mm -hmm. dead or alive, or even a band, who would it be? Uh, Prince, Michael. Mm, oh gosh, just those, are, so, those are the big guns. You're pulling out the big guns. So, so many. I mean. I guess it depends because I appreciate so many different styles of music. Mm -hmm. I would love to do jazz. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I know some people like even now that I would love to do jazz with. There's some wonderful, like wonderful jazz artists uh, out there. Robert Glasper is one of them. Um, mm -hmm. I loved like, uh, like, and, and then, and then there's these new hip hop artists, her Daniel Caesar, of course, the late Mac Miller, I loved him. I just all, there's just, I think it just depends on your mood. Right. There's just so much music. Like people are like, what's your favorite? Well, I can tell you songs I hate, but I can't, <laughs> there's, but you know, it's like. I know, I know exactly what you mean. It really, um, our mood is really, you know, um, music and art is just, it's a feeling thing. And depending on the mood, um, that's what you want to see, what that's what you want to do, type of makeup you want to do. So I, I totally, I totally get it. The Sometimes creative. you want to listen to a little, here I could turn back time. You share, <laughs> you know, sometime. <laughs> Don't we just all love Cher? So talking about Cher, okay. I saw her. I, well, I met the only person I ever met um, that was like really, I had a, a, a professional and um starstruck nice. moment was Serena Williams and I actually took a, I have a picture with her and the funny thing is I'll make this brief is she was walking into a pole dancing studio while I was leaving it and um you know you learn how to to to, to pole dance I was doing a stretch class that day so but she was she was coming in when I was leaving so 
Um, any of it, we're moving on. Um, talking cool. about share because we want to talk about divas. Yes. Have you ever had a diva moment? And okay, so so what is your description of a diva moment? So like a diva moment, it's like um, they have a cup of water, um, but uh, or they have some garbage. They're gonna throw it on the floor and they're gonna ask someone pick it up. Oh, God. pick it up. Mm, um, like an assistant to pick it up kind of thing I, 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 girl I've, I've heard stories I've heard stories <laughs> not really I've not really had a diva moment like that I think it's because for me coming up I've been with a lot of dudes and I've been like ah eh, let's help you with your you know amp or your drum kit or whatever so in that respect I always looked at it as a team mm -hmm. because in my head I think I'm not a stand-up comedian. I can't do this just me. Really. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'll, I need somebody to work with or music or something because I don't play an instrument. I, I do write, but I don't play. So what? how would that help me to be that way to anybody? Right, right. And so for some reason, I, I society and for me, I kind of, we kind of attach the diva moment, diva terminology to something negative. I don't yeah. know how that happened because, you know, um, they have, you know, the, the divas live um, singing and it's like, it's like, it's fierce women being and, and accomplished professionals right. um, being, and, doing their element. So I'm not quite sure how that kind of, um, you know, linked together where it's a negative connotation. I don't know. How yeah, I think that. that because a lot of times, I think it was originally with opera or something where the singers, but I think those performers were held in a different status than mm -hmm. have now I don't know but yeah yeah I don't know why it is either but yeah that diva moment I generally cook for everybody in the band so that's my thing I love food I'm a big foodie so <laughs> we're, we're gonna have to do a cookout together girl <laughs> all right so we're moving on yes we're moving on to fun and game ding 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 um so if you had a superpower what would it be? Fun and games, fun and games. Okay. Well, um, I wanted to say, I think I want to have a superpower to see through bullshit, but I think I'm pretty good at that for the moment. <laughs> <laughs> that, I mean, that could be quite useful in Congress right now. So Dude, that could be quite useful. Yeah. You'd be calling out so many Congress members. It's kind of like Wonder Woman and her, her golden lasso where you- Yeah, yeah force people to tell the truth you know it's, oh god that I mean, last rule would would be uh, like uh, would would not have enough so useful okay <laughs> i'm sure some congressman out there is going to try a way to steal it and get rid of it as soon as possible okay? or or some ex-president but we're not going there <laughs> <laughs> superpower i think like if we're talking things like flight i uh, i think i would like to uh i don't know read minds that's a good one that's a good one kind of like um 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 uh, professor xavier to be able to to read someone's mind that's a good one that's a or good be one. invisible remind remind <laughs> it's, it's <more> <laughs> oh i'm i'm invisible already in my daily life i don't know <laughs> i was gonna say i can, I can walk them. around naked steal food from everywhere go everywhere be a, like no one would know so that's all right <laughs> So next question, um, if, where, where was it that the, was your most embarrassing place that you farted? <laughs> <laughs> wow, the most embarrassing place? There's been so many, really. Oh um, my. <laughs> <laughs> like, and you know, I have to admit though, if I do have to do it, like that was in a meeting once, but like because a closed like, meeting and you can hear, hear a pin drop. Yes. And then someone's is, giving a, <laughs> doing someone's yeah, giving a presentation. presentation. <laughs> so your, your whole hope is this when you it's, I know it's a struggle and now everyone out there, y'all know, you can feel me right now. When I say, you know, you have to fart, it's a bad time. And you're thinking to yourself, should I clench or let it go? And if I let it go, what are the consequences? Is it gonna be too loud? Is it gonna not be loud? It, or is it gonna smell, whatever. So you make the decision, I'm going for it. So 
sitting in the chair oh, and, then you're sitting, and then you're like mm, and you're waiting for a moment where they say something and you kind of lift one cheek because you understand that the mm -hmm. air is low mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you're trying to like uh kind of ease it out kind you of ease thing. it out you know what i'm telling you Squeezing your bum and Kegel exercises will benefit your life because mm -hmm. you just always be able to like, do, 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 do. And, and then, then it, all of a sudden it, it comes up like a, a high pitch kind of it's noise. Like, mm, it's just a little <laughs> one, like a little trumpet. And then you're like, okay. And then you're like, <clears throat> and then you're just, and then you kind of move because you figure if you like kind of let your air kind of go a little bit it'll disperse and no one will smell it. So if you're just kind of like doing things to like move the air. But everybody knows. And then you're like, oh Lord. <laughs> it was a meeting, but it was a meeting, like a, uh, we were trying to get a gig. <laughs> um, so going to your most embarrassing moment, let's talk about a romantic moment. Who is your celebrity crush? Idris Elba, I like. Ooh. Okay. And this is gonna sound really weird. I mm -hmm. love Larry David. Okay. I know, curb your enthusiasm. I think I love, he and I love Neil deGrasse Tyson, who is mm -hmm. an astrophysicist. So I, I like, and I love Jack Black, but I mean, I love a whole bunch of people. I think mm -hmm. I love comedians because I like their, their way of thinking, but mm -hmm. then Idris Elba is, come on. Like we don't even have to uh, just look at him. I know. I mean, they're, they're so, they're, I mean, they're chiseled. Like I, I just um, saw a, a, a movie from um, recently of Charlie Hunnam and I go, hmm. hmm. And, you know, I've always had a crush on Chris Evans all the way back when, you know, he first, when I first saw his first movie, um, not another teen movie. And I just saw him and I was like, okay, that is one gorgeous man and yeah. and when he once he did um once he did um uh, captain america and right. he, he owned america's ass you know i was like oh yes you do you just gotta come over here so i can spank it real good and i go mm. <laughs> i love that I, I can't i can't they're they're just too gorgeous you know they're yeah. made for hollywood and um they're gonna get so much attention i'd be i'd be jealous because every, everyone's gonna everyone's gonna go after them but well but i have my boyfriend so i'm cool <laughs> your boyfriend's very hot by the way we love, I him. love him he's, he's yeah. amazing he's so he sweet. is He's amazing. Okay. I was going to say one more celebrity crush, and I hate to admit this because he's so young, but when he showed up on that, the Grammys with all of the leather, Harry Styles, I was mm -hmm. like, oh. mm -hmm. <sighs> yeah. And then I felt <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, next question. So um, I guess we're both fans of RuPaul's Drag Race. Um, Super fan. I know. Who is your favorite drag queen? Oh, okay. That's hard. I'm, I'm digging. Uh, I've always loved Bianca Del Rio. Oh, yes. That's my She's so fierce. Oh. She's so hilarious. hilarious. I'm like, really, I want to go to one of her shows and be like, do me, do me. Like she's an insult comic. Like, yes. do me, tell me, insult me. I'm like, I want to laugh, please. <laughs> I love her. And then aside from that, I started seeing prior to her being on RuPaul, she was a like a, um, a designer, a fashion for, seamstress. For, yeah, sorry, a seamstress. Yeah, I couldn't think of the word for Broadway and stuff. So that's why all of her clothing too. She makes it all mm -hmm. fierce. Mm -hmm. I love her. I love Sasha Velour. Of course, I love Simone that just came out this year as the new queen. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm I'm a fan of so many for so many reasons. A lot of them just have their their things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The, the all three of them that you named, they are all um, very multi-talented and they're brilliant at what they do. So, yes. um, okay, so we're, we're gonna play a game. Um, who would you, so who would you frack, marry <laughs> and befriend? So I'm gonna name three, um, Johnny Depp, Jude Law and Chris Hemsworth. Chris Helmsworth is the, is um, not- oh. Thor, he's Thor. He's Thor, right, that's what I thought. Oh God, okay, so he, what was the three? Johnny Depp, mm -hmm. Jude Law, mm -hmm. and Chris Helmsworth. And it's F, Frack. Marry and befriend. 
Mary and be friends. Uh, well, can you, I have to have one of each, right? Okay, because I was going to say Chris Helmsworth, I would marry uh, Johnny Depp. Oh, it'd be kind of grungy, but I might frack him. And then um, <laughs> Jude Law would be my friend. Yeah. I know. I have to take it. I don't know. Johnny, I, I love you, Johnny Depp, but yeah. Johnny, Johnny has, has a certain vibe. He's, he's he does. so, he's, he's got that sexy, cool thing he needs going to on. Wear, he needs to wear the pirate outfit though, if we're going to have a good <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, are you going to make me walk the plank? <laughs> yes. I'll walk your plank, baby. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Zoe. Um, I think it's been a pleasure speaking with you today. And with that, um, I want to thank you all for joining us and, and speaking with um, Zoe today. Um, we're going to say goodbye to Zoe for now. And you can book her for gigs on gigworks.com. Uh, that's gigworks.com, or you can find her profile on the link below. And we know you've all got talent, so sign up for a free profile today. And we'll see you very shortly again. Bye, everyone. Thanks. Bye-bye, bye-bye, bye-bye.